Okay, class, so now we're going to look at Lab 9, which corresponds to Chapter 8, Hypothesis Testing for Comparing Two Samples. Now, the first few problems are all going to be comparing two different proportions. So I want to help you through at least one example of each type. So let's look at number one. Here we have a survey of workers and a survey of bosses. And we want to, we're testing the claim that those who say that monitoring email is seriously unethical, that the proportion of employees is greater than the proportion of bosses. Whenever you're doing um, hypothesis testing for two sample, it is common, more the norm, for the null hypothesis to be that P1 equals P2. And we just worry about the not equal to, greater than, or less than for the alternative hypothesis. So in this case, our null hypothesis is P1 equals P2. And I'm going to let 1 stand for the workers and 2 stand for the bosses. This, you could switch that around, but you need to tell me if you switch things around. You need to tell me which one is 1, which one is group 1, which one is group 2. Then I, I want to find the test statistic and the p-value, and I can do that using Minitab. So let's bring up Minitab, and I have these up here for later. Um, whoops, I don't need to do that. There we go. All right, so I'm going to go to, let me put this down. I'm going to go to stat, basic stat, two proportions, because I'm comparing two proportions. I do not have the samples in columns. I have the summarized data. So the number of events, remember I called sample one the workers. So 192 of the workers said it was unethical out of 436. Sample two are my bosses. So in this case, 40 out of the 121 bosses said it was unethical. Okay, so read the problem. A survey of 436 workers showed that, let's go over here. Uh, a survey of 436 workers showed that 192 said they were seriously unethical to monitor employee emails. When 121 bosses were surveyed, 40 said it was seriously unethical to monitor employee emails. We're going to use a 5% significance level to test the claim that the workers, proportion of workers is greater than the proportion of bosses, that more workers thought it was unethical than bosses, okay? So, we go here to options. Don't worry about the confidence levels. We're not, we're not examining confidence levels. And the hypothesized difference, if there is no difference, remember our null hypothesis was that there is that P1 equal P2, which meant that there was no difference. If there is no difference, then the hypothesized different difference is zero. Our alternative, though, was the difference is greater than. We thought that the workers were had a greater proportion of workers that thought this was unethical. And if you remember from the... Um, from the lecture, if and from the book, if we are doing um, hypothesis testing, then we use the pooled estimate of the proportion. We hang on a second. I want to sh make sure that I have that on. Okay, so stat basic stat two proportion, right? And we had our our um, summarized data. I need to put this back in because I wanted to make sure that I, I on the lec if you, you can also look on the lecture notes to see that for the you use the pooled estimate for hypothesis testing, 436, and then there was 40 out of 121 of the bosses. Okay, here we were doing a greater than. We think the workers. The difference of the workers is greater than the other. And we're going to use the pooled estimate. You use the exact value if you're doing confidence intervals. You use the pooled estimate if you're doing hypothesis testing. So we're doing a hypothesis test. So we use the pooled estimate of the proportion. Click OK. 
and click OK. And my test statistic is 2.17 and my p-value is 0 0.015. So those go here and here. My p-value 0 0.015 is less than the significance level. Recall the decision rule says if the p-value is less than or equal to the significance level, then we reject the null hypothesis. In this case, we do think that the percent, the proportion of workers that think it's unethical to check their email is greater than the proportion of bosses. Okay, so that's and the rest of these are very similar to that. The next one we want to look at is comparing two means. So we're going to compare the BMI of men and women. To do that, I need to um, cut, have them in the same worksheet. So I've opened up both F Health and M Health. And I'm going to come here and I'm going to click here and look, it darkens the whole thing. It selects the whole column. I'm going to copy this column onto F Health here at the end. Case cells. And I'm going to change this name to BMI. Men. So I know that this BMI stands for BMI female and this BMI stands for BMI man. Well, I can go ahead and change this if I want. BMI female. Now I'm comparing BMI men to BMI female. So I'm comparing their means. To do that, I go to stat, basic stat, two sample T. These are two independent samples. Click there. I have them in the, each of, in its own column. So the first one is female, and then the last one is the BMI men. Now I do need to come over here and let's look. We're trying to see if they are equal to each other versus they are not equal to each other. So when I go to options, I just want to make sure it's set to not equal to. In this problem, it does not. If we, let's, read, let's look at the lab again. This lab that says nothing about assuming that the variances were equal. Unless we know that the variances are equal, we've either tested it or we've been told they're equal. We never assume, you never check this box unless you are told that to assume equal variances or you have been asked to test it yourself. So we click OK and we click OK. And here's our test statistic and our p-value. Now, this p-value is very, if there is no significance level given, the default value for the p for the significance level is 0 0.05. So this p-value is very much bigger than the significance level of 0 0.05. So our conclusion is do not reject the null hypothesis. There is nothing to suggest that the BMIs are different for men and women. All right, so the next one I want to look at so that was a two independent sample. The next, the rest of these are all very similar to that. The first one that is using two paired samples is this one right here. So I've gone ahead and entered that into, so I've gone ahead and entered them in. Now notice I've entered them in into two different columns and I had to be very careful that person one, their reported height was 53 inches and their actual height was 58.1 inches. Now, this is something I would go back and check because this person thinks they are five inches shorter than they actually are, which is a significant amount to not know you're five inches taller than you really are. So I checked it, though, and it's correct. Now, to do a paired sample, we go to stat, basic stat, paired T. In this case, each sample is in its own column, which so I put reported and measured. And I am trying, let's go over here, I'm trying to see if there's a difference between are they the same or are they different. That's a not equal to. So the null hypothesis is that mu1 equals mu2 versus the alternative hypothesis, which is mu1 does not equal mu2. So I go to options, and it's not equal to. If there is no difference, remember the alternative was there was no difference, so that if there is no difference, the difference is zero. 
you click OK. It's rare, let me point this out, it's rare that you're ever going to change this hypothesized difference to, in these two sample tests to anything other than zero. It's certainly not in this class. So click OK and click OK. And here's my test statistic. Here's my p-value. Again, I'm supposed to be using a 0 0.05. Well, my p-value of 0.424 is significantly larger. So there is nothing to suggest, so I do not reject the null hypothesis. There is nothing to suggest that there is a difference between the reported height and the measured height between these females ages 12 to 16. The last one to look at is, let me see. I'm going to do number 17. It's, we're, here we're comparing two standard deviations. We're trying to see if these two populations, if the population of tobacco use versus alcohol use in children's movies is this, if the amount of variance, if they have different standard deviations. We're going to identify the F-test statistic, the p-value, and draw a conclusion. So let's bring up Minitab to do a two- Variance um, test, we go to stat, basic stat, two variances, stat, basic stat, two variances. Here we have the summarized data. We were given, in this case, we were given the sample standard deviation. So you could be given, you could do this problem with either the sample standard deviation or the sample variance, but we were given the sample standard deviation. The sample size for the tobacco use was there was 50 movies, and the standard deviation for tobacco use was 104. We looked at 50 movies for alcohol use, so 50 samples size for alcohol use. And in this case, there was a 66.3 standard deviation options. Here we're looking at the ratio of standard deviation for tobacco use over standard deviation for alcohol use in these children's movies. Now, when we were looking at the difference when we were doing the two sample test for means or two sample test for proportions, we were looking at a difference. If there is no difference, the numbers were the same, then the difference is zero. But if you're looking at a ratio, if you have 5 over 5, that ratio is not 0, that ratio is 1. So in this case, the hypothesized ratio will always be 1. And we're looking to see if it is just not equal to. We're just wanting to see if they have different standard deviations. Different means not equal to. So we click OK and we click OK. This I don't really need. Here I have, okay, now here is, look, here is my test statistic. I have, so all of this is for the two sample variants, and I don't need any of this. I really don't, those are confidence intervals, but I'm not really looking at confidence intervals, right? So I can skip to the test. My F statistic is 2.46, so the test statistic is F equals 2.46. My p-value is 0 0.002. Now, p this p-value is significantly less than 0 0.05, so we reject the null hypothesis. There is enough evidence to suggest that the standard deviations for the number of times tobacco is used versus the number of times alcohol is used in a children's movie is different. This one is just the same, except you just need to enter in placebo into one column, cal calcium into the second column, and after you do that, it's very similar to number 17. So that's the end of our lab nine, which is two sample inferences for two samples. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'd be glad to do my best to answer them via email or phone. That's the end of this lecture.